Bitch, I bet I would. On the low, what's up with you, ho? Bitch, you smoking drunk. Bitch, you know, bust like 44 when I spit that flow. Cause we go. What is going on, guys? Seuss HD here, and today I'm bringing you a video going over Project Terminus. Now, ter it's not really Project, but Terminus is basically a GSC manager. Um, it'll allow you to inject GSC files. It'll allow you to make packages to share GSC files, and it will also allow you to make updater configuration files to basically ship out your um, GSC projects and whatnot and have them automatically updated from anyone who's ever downloaded the actual um, configuration file. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make a tutorial on actually how to use this really quickly, and we're just going to go um, tab by tab to make this simple on us. So first thing you have is the PS or the actual connection tab. Um, PC is not supported right now, so I will be working on that soon. Should only take me about 20 minutes to fix that, but I need to get the offsets first, so um, I will try and get that done. Um, basically, this is where you connect, attach, etc. Make sure you set the right platform. Um, it'll say at the top what you have. Um, so right now, obviously, I'm on multiplayer on PS3. Next thing um, we have is the injector. This is the part where you can actually inject all your files. Um, if you want to use this, you just add a folder. Make sure that if you're adding a file, you go ahead and make sure you go into maps. Make sure you click MP, because if you click maps, it's not going to allow you to do it. Make sure you click MP. Once you do that, all the files should be here. If any of the files are read, it's because that file doesn't exist in the actual um, game, so it's obviously not going to inject it because it's not a real file. So um, if that happens, you just need to rename the file to something that exists. Um, and then you have, also you can add individual files if you need to. You can also clear the list. Um, you can inject the list. You can uninject, which is something new. I don't know why people haven't done this before. If they have, I must have missed it. But um, it's really simple. All it does is allows you to uh, basically clear memory from everything you injected, and it allows you to reset script parse trees so that you can um, either inject something else or you can um, just not have any mods anymore, which is pretty simple. Um, so obviously, it'll do this whenever it's injecting. It's pretty simple. Um, you can also uninject, and it'll automatically reset script parse tree and clear memory. Um, I always like to click reset script parse tree anyway, but um, yeah, so that works. Next thing we have is the GSC utility. This has a little developer script you can use. You can use anti-join, um, all this crazy stuff. Um, just really small developer script options, really basic. Um, you just compile it and it'll auto-inject it as long as you have dev script enabled. Um, so that's just a little extra thing. If you don't want to write an entire GSC to mess with this stuff, you can just disable it. Um, utility. Uh, we have the underscore rank fix, which is the overflow fix for underscore rank. It automatically comes with this. You can just check that, and it'll automatically inject whenever you're injecting. Then we have the tip manager, tip creator, NTIP manager, and NTIP creator. So these are basically ways for you to distribute your GSC. Um, if any of you have used GSCR, um, it's like that, but not shit. So basically, the TIP manager will basically allow you to um, see all the TIP files you've created. It'll allow you to load the TIP file into the injector. It will allow you to import them from wherever you download them. Um, it'll let you delete them and delete all, obviously. Then we got the tip creator. Basically, the tip creator is to make your GSC files or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and do TCM really quickly because it's just something I have on hand. Um, so this is TCM v9 by try and catch me. And the description is, we'll just put GSC for fun, right? Or we'll just put tutorial. If I could type it, it'd be a lot nicer. Then you go ahead and add your files. I know this is 10.1, but it's not actually 10.1 right now. You can go ahead and check and see what you have in here. Obviously, you can pack it in go ahead and create the tip. It'll tell you, select a folder that you want, and we'll go ahead and select desktop, and it'll create it. All right, once you have the tip, it should show up in the tip manager. You should be able to um, load it into the injector, obviously. So we'll have that, and you should be able to inject. Um, go ahead and uninject, reset, clear list, etc. So 
this is really nice. You can just upload the tip file now instead of uploading the actual GS or the all the GSCs and stuff. You have big projects, etc. This doesn't really apply to a lot of people because I know a lot of people do it in uh, client IDs, but the next part will definitely apply to you. So um, this is this is the cool part, the part that took me the longest. So the NTIP is basically a configuration file for you to have your um, or your TIP or your GSC project automatically downloaded to anyone who downloaded the original one. So basically, you can have it automatically update. So basically, what we have here is the NTIP manager. Um, we have the NTIP list. We have um, import. We have the change log for the current NTIP. Um, apparently, you can edit this. I need to fix that in the tool. Basically, um, you can import NTIPs. You can delete, and you can delete all. Um, the reason there's no like load or anything, because there's no reason to, it'll automatically copy the um, corresponding TIP to the TIP manager. So the NTIP creator is where you actually create these NTIPs. Um, the process for actually creating them is fairly difficult, so I'm going to go ahead and try and explain that right now. Alright, so to use the NTIP creator, you're going to have to do a couple different things. Basically, you only need to use this if you're planning on making updates for your project. Now, I know that sounds a little bit silly to say if, because obviously you're probably going to want to update your project at some point. So in order to start your um, project on this NTIP system, you're going to need to make your first NTIP. Now, if this is your first one you're making, you're going to need to follow this exactly. If this is your second one, I'll go ahead and get into that in a minute. So. For your first NTIP, you're going to need to make a name for the NTIP, so we'll go ahead and make TCM Updater. Make sure you always keep this name the same. Um, if you change the name, it's going to make two NTIPs, which will look ugly and it won't make much sense to the person who has, or the the user, basically, it won't make much sense. So there's no point in, you know, renaming this. Just make sure you keep it like project, you know, whatever, or like the updater or something like that. Um, Next thing you're going to want to do is go into the NTIP URL and just go ahead and if this is your first one, this only applies if this is the first time you're making this for this TIP, you're going to need to make none. Then go into your update URL. This is going to basically be the URL of your uploaded file. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Mediafire really quickly and upload my TIP really quickly. Um, if it's on the desktop, that'll be good. If not, then whatever. Oh, yeah, it's probably here then. I gotta look for it. There it is, tcmv9.tip. Go ahead and open that. Upload this. Um, Mediafire, hello? Media, Mediafire, okay. Go ahead and replace that. Alright, we'll go ahead and copy the link and put that here. All right, you have to use Mediafire, guys. You cannot use any other file storage site because I made this specifically for Mediafire. So you have to use Mediafire, guys. It's free, it's not a big deal. Um, there's no way you're gonna get over like two or three gigabytes, so just use Mediafire. Um, then you're gonna go ahead and put the version. The version for this is version nine. Change log, I don't know his change log, so I'm just gonna put IDK, not my menu. Then we'll go ahead and create our NTIP. Go ahead and select a folder. I always just put it on the desktop. Once it's done, it should say error down here. That's okay. That's completely fine. Once you've made the NTIP, you're not done yet, because obviously you can't have none for the NTIP URL. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually go to Mediafire, and you're going to upload your NTIP. So whatever, wherever you just put it, you're going to put your um, NTIP. So we put tcmupdater.ntip. I'm going to open that, and we're going to upload it. By the way, this is 92 bytes. That's how small this is. So this file should be extremely small. Copy the link, paste it in your NTIP URL. Then we're going to create the NTIP again, and this time we're going to put it in the exact same place. Then we're going to go back to Mediafire, and here's the weird thing. We're going to go ahead and replace our old NTIP. All right, so go ahead and go to our same exact NTIP. It should be a little bit bigger this time, and we should be able to upload it. Make sure you replace. You have to replace it, all right? If you 
every time you update this NTIP, in order for the update to get shipped to the clients, you have to replace it. Okay, you have to replace it. The link has to always be the same, all right? And now if you look carefully, this link, right, should be the exact same. You see how it's the exact same, nothing changed? It should always be like that. All right, now that you've got the NTIP in place, we are basically good to go. So you should be able to go into your NTIP manager and you should be able to see, hey, we have version 9 and there's the change log, etc. So once that happens, um, you're good to go. If you ever want to update it, here's how you update it. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just hit edit NTIP. We're going to load up our old NTIP. So project T TCM updater. Um, for some reason, we're going to get an error. Okay. Let's try that again, but this time let's do it with the real NTIP for some reason. Okay, that worked. Um, I don't know why that happened. I'm clueless. Anyway, so, um, oh, it was the change log. It was the change log. Okay, so the change log on the desktop was empty. That's what happened. Um, anyway, so once we have our change log, all right, I'm sorry, not a change log. I'm losing my mind right now. Um, if we want to update it, all we're going to do is change the update URL and the version, right? So our version is going to be, uh, let's say 10.0 or whatever, right? Um, then obviously we're going to go ahead and put our, um, link in here and we'll recreate it so let me go ahead and put um new update or whatever create ntip and then we'll just replace it all right and we should be able to just upload our ntip and it should say we have an update project tcm updater okay return and now for our clients we should be able to close this and start up oh this is a completely different thing lol okay uh, let me import importing is pretty simple as well ran into an error <laughs> this is not looking good don't worry guys it's just a really small bug I didn't handle I'll go ahead and just uh, fix that in a minute so yeah, obviously it's going to say NTIP updater, one file ready for an update. We'll hit yes, and what it'll do is it'll take a second, and it'll update, and we'll have our new tip. Obviously we had the same exact tip, so it's not going to do anything. But um, yeah, so this will basically allow your clients to just, whenever they start the tool, they'll automatically get the update. Um, and all you have to do, all you have to do as the creator is just link the NTIP. All you need is that NTIP link. So... Um, yeah, all you need is this link right here. This is the only link you need. So whenever you do your post on NGU or CCM or wherever, you're just going to link this, and they will be able to download that and import it using the manager, and they will have your project. Hopefully you guys enjoy this project. Um, if you do, let me know. If you find any bugs, let me know. There are bound to be a ton of errors because this is the initial release. And... I missed a couple things, I'm pretty sure. Um, so if you guys find any errors in this, obviously let me know. If you have any questions, leave a question. I'll try and answer it for you. Um, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, leave a like. I'll see you guys later. Peace.